Okay, are we all set? All set. Okay. Hello, girl and gabbers, and welcome to an extra, extra, extra special episode of The Girl and Gab. As always, myself, Connor, Carly, and Sarah are your hosts. But today, on this episode, Patricia Ward Kelly has agreed to speak to us about Judy and Jean, and we are just so excited for this. <laughs> I think we've won a competition or something that she has agreed to come on, but we can't thank her enough for agreeing to do this. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, Patricia Ward Kelly is the wife and biographer of legendary dancer, director and choreographer Jean Kelly. They met in Washington, D.C. in 1985 when she was a writer on a television special about the Smithsonian and he was the host. Soon after, he invited her to California to write his memoir, a project for which she recorded his words nearly every day for over 10 years. They married in 1990 and were together until his death in 1996. As trustee of the Gene Kelly Image Trust and creative director of the Gene Kelly Legacy Incorporated, Mrs. Kelly celebrates Gene Kelly's artistry worldwide. Her one woman show, Gene Kelly The Legacy, is currently on tour in the US and abroad. Her live symphonic cinematic tribute, Gene Kelly, A Life in Music, launched in the spring of 2018 with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra and had its US debut with three sold out shows with the Seattle Symphony in March of this year. She lives in Los Angeles, where she curates the Gene Kelly archives and is completing a book about her late husband. And we would just like to take this opportunity to thank Patricia from the bottom of our hearts for agreeing to come and speak with us today. So without further ado, here is our conversation with Mrs. Jean Kelly. Oh, hi. Good, morning. good afternoon. Good evening for all of you, wherever Liverpool, Toronto. Is that right? Toronto? Kingston, uh, close, close oh, to King Toronto. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I did my <clears throat> show with the Kingston Symphony. I was there. <laughs> So, so that that was great. I mean, that was kind of a that was sort of a fluke because I had met that conductor years before and he wanted to conduct that show. So that worked out really well. That's so, amazing. Yes, that was such a good show. <laughs> I can't wait to get it. It's we just did had three sold out shows at Seattle Symphony and now we're gearing up for next year. It's just it's slow the booking everything, but um we're We'll be in Vancouver, and uh, looks like we have several others. I'm really working on Toronto. I'd love to do Liverpool Symphony. I, I, I met with the woman there, and I just need to. We just need to make that happen. So, yeah, I've actually seen your show twice. I went to the one in Toronto uh, back in 2017, and I actually met you. <laughs> Not that you ever you look that, kind of familiar. But... No, it's no. Actually, I'm looking at your face. I'm kind of going, oh, you look kind of familiar, but. So that was the one woman show. So you saw both. You saw you've seen both. Wow. Wow. Yes, I did. It was fantastic. And it was lovely to meet you and and now see you again. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, that's how it works. It's just like you kind of get out and then it just keeps cycling. And and uh, I remember my parents used to say, you know, if you just didn't have so many distractions, if you you could just finish the book, if you didn't get out and do all these things and and I said but no that's that's what makes things happen you have to go you can't just stay in a hole here and write a book and then go oh okay I'm I'm done <laughs> you know, it's like I said you kind of have to build an audience and it's and you have to build the trust oh my dog is under here and he's got oh. I gave him a big bone so he would both of them Isabella got one too oh she just ran out. She's the famous dog. She's the one that Ryan Gosling uh, um, almost killed. So oh, <laughs> <she's like laughs> you can Google that. And uh, yeah. but I, but I really even with social media, you just find that it's you just have to kind of be consistent and be out there and and make your audience feel that you really are engaged, which is what I am. I mean, that, that it, it, I really believe in that connection. And, and some days, you know, you just don't, you just don't feel like, 
it takes about two and a half hours to post something and then read every comment and write every response. And, and um, sometimes you think, oh, I just can't do it today, but it, it really is important. And I've seen how it's evolved into something that's a real, um, real sincere conversation, I think, as opposed to just kind of silly. I, when I started on Facebook in 2011, I thought, oh, this is going to be just awful. You know, this is just going to be one silly comment after another. And then I kind of gradually started coming out and making the posts more personal and, um, and then people really started to engage. And I think during COVID, especially, it was a time when people were looking for a connection. And and I remember I posted about Brigadoon and they they just there was just this huge outpouring of affection for Brigadoon. And if you read the quote biographies, they really pan the the movie and people just said this is my favorite movie and it means so much to me and they gave and I said why and they gave me all these reasons and it's really realigned my thinking of Brigadoon and many other things so it, it's anyway that's all kind of off topic but it's <laughs> Just think, can I say, and Judy G movies fell into that as well. The one that happens to be Carly's favorite, um, pirate. Some, pirate. The pirate. I know the. I love the pirate, yeah. and I just, um, yeah, and it it also gets this kind of short shrift, and and people, I always say, people either go hot or cold with the pirate. They either love it or they hate it, and. Um, I love it. I just think it's it's beautiful. It's the technicolor in it is it, it's just lush and gorgeous. And uh, and I think I think the chemistry between Gene and Judy and it is just uh, it's so intense and so wonderful. And and the humor. I mean, it's just the wit and humor in it is. I, it just cracks me up because I could see the two of them uh, playing and it's just, mm -hmm. and yet it was a very stressful time on the, on the set. Um, and it was a time when, you know, Judy and Vincent were not getting along. And so Judy would turn to Jean and it made for a quite uncomfortable situation because she would hear uh, Vincent, her husband, is directing, and yet she would turn to Jean and ask him what to do. And so Jean felt uncomfortable because he didn't want to overstep. And and yet it 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 was just the way to get through some of the things. But I mean, he he adored her. So, um, but she, she she could be quite she could be quite tricky and. But I think the pirate is, uh, it ranks very high for me. I mean, it's really, I, but so does Summerstock. I mean, and Summerstock often gets dismissed. And and I think it, I was really amazed at how many people said it was their favorite movie. And and again, I think that chemistry between the two, the, you really feel the intensity of the affection between Judy and Jean in that. And um, I think I think you feel the humor and wit and kind of charm in the pirate, but Summerstock, um, you just feel this depth of of a relationship. I think so. Anyway, I kind of went off on things. That's so, okay. Which is what I brought you on. But I'm kind of I'm very, I'm very rarely on track on anything. You know, I just kind of go. But you sort of wind me up. But um, that's so, okay. We're so thankful that you've come on, by the way. I'm sorry? We're so grateful and thankful that you've agreed oh, to come on. Oh, no, I'm delighted. I was so happy that you reached out because it's just, again, it's, I think it helps. It's a way for people to, if they just, I mean, I always say to the marketing people for my shows, I say, you know, they'll say, well, we'll put an ad. And I said, an ad doesn't work because, you know, people look at it and they kind of go, what is that? And Gene Kelly's wife, I mean, what is she, 110 years old? And so it's it's a way for people to think, oh, maybe maybe this could be interesting that that the storytelling, because 
really, as you know, the the shows are not really shows. They're really more of a conversation with the audience. So the tone is exactly what you're hearing. And that, I think, I, it's a hard thing. I keep trying to find a different way to describe what I do because show sounds like I'm going to come out and sing and dance. And I think people, uh, when they get in the room, then they feel like, I I always say I like to make it feel like we're just sitting in a living room having a conversation, even if it's three thousand people. You try to make it like that, and and so this kind of thing helps a lot, I think, because people people go, oh, that could be kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've got your get happy shirt on there, so that's beautiful. And yes, yeah, so it was a gift off Carly. Oh, yeah. that's great. Well, we can talk about that and you have a beautiful poster back there so this is yes, yes. <laughs> you have all of our judy uh, items out um i just uh i you know there are a few people i wish i could have met obviously she would be one of them there um i really i'd like to have met her really at the at the the peak when she was with Jean and when she would stop by the house and sing and things like that. I mean, the, he just, he just ranked her as the, the top, um, the brightest woman in Hollywood and the sexiest woman and, and um, just so, so smart and sharp. And, and what, what was, I think, upsetting to him was that the, the portraits began to focus on her later years and and you just get this very twisted version of this remarkable woman and and I've gone to a few of them and they're so distressing because you just I keep thinking that's not the woman Jean described to me that's not that's not this is a woman off the rails not not the woman who could um you know match any song he said she, if you they would they would have these kind of um they play this little game where they would try to outwit each other with the uh, songs and lyrics from the and he said she just knew everything from tin pan alley she just knew every lyric every verse every chorus and and they could just both go back and forth and and he said she could look at a sheet of music and then just it it was just memorized she just knew it right and she knew exactly where that camera was. And that's why she was so helpful in teaching Gene how to appear on camera because he had no experience with that. And coming from the stage, he didn't realize that it's a completely different animal and that the um, even how to sit in a chair is different. You have to kind of, he said, you have to kind of really squish down into it. And she had to teach him all these things. And I think, um, and he said she had this sixth sense of where the camera was and what to do with it. And you just don't get that sense in these portraits. You get the sense of this woman who's just completely in decline and really out of control and, and not on the top of her game. And I think that um, it it means that the public and going forward, what bothers me is that young younger people are only going to see that they're not going to see this extraordinary uh woman um just a force of nature and so i'm glad you're kind of out there trying to keep it going yeah that's why we're here isn't it um it's tiktok especially today with the younger TikTok. ones it's it's just like myths it's nothing but myths it's not even ever any facts or anything it's you know or they, they might take like a slight there's like a grain of truth in something but like blow it up yeah and we know jeans being on the receiving ends of that as well i was just saying to the guys um i was watching miss mojo's one of their recent ones about the dark side of classic hollywood oh yeah. and gene popped in there his treatment of debbie reynolds during singing in the rain and we we, we know the it's truth true. behind that and the kiss, the myth about the kiss and everything. Oh. We've seen the kiss. <laughs> it's I know it's so um it's really unfair because um, you know, he did so much for her and 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 
consistently did so much for her and to to print that and to do that and and it was written by another person a, a woman I know and I was just I just thought what a cheap shot you know what a cheap shot uh, to, to put in this mythology uh, after Jean's died um, because he read her first book and he was he just kind of shook his head and just said uh, you know he said because it said that there her feet were bleeding all over and a doctor had to come and everything. And he just shook his head and he said, Oh, I, you know, I didn't see any blood on the floor or anything. He, I don't think he realized how, how potent these things would be that they would, they would become facts uh, and, and very difficult to dismiss because it just gets, it, nobody does any fact checking. So it just gets re reiterated. And I, in fact, I posted something about um, when I was kind of knocking some of those stories, I, I posted something about the production notes that are here at USC in the library that I spent months going through uh, just minute, they're minute by minute records of what happens on the set. And it's, they're two separate records and they were kept by two different people. And, and it literally is, minute by minute and and you you have to remember that this is a business and so they're keeping track of it drove leslie Caron crazy she thought they were spies and they would write down when she was going to the bathroom and when she got out and everything and but that's what they did i mean and and literally i always use the example that they had one that said um, I, you know, I don't remember the exact hour time, but it was something like from 9.32 to 9.35, Gene Kelly retied left shoe and, and it, and that's serious. And so I said that if you go to the, those records, then you can see that none of what is described it happened and and the author of that book said oh i never i never went to, i know i didn't even know about that i never went to that so how do you write a book if you don't go to primary sources i mean it's like how could you do that and and especially things that are are um harmful to somebody i mean uh, really and when you use a word like abuse uh, especially today you've it's a hot, 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 hot word and a very unfair word. So I'll just keep um, keep pounding those out. But but I do feel like I also, to some degree, kind of raised the flag for Judy as a as the magnificent woman she was and the magnificent artist. I mean, he. I always I, I when I describe him, I I. I Jean said that Jean, Judy, Frank, and Fred were the greatest entertainers of that period. And I always just say that they're like comets. They're like, they just soar through the air once and then they're gone. And and they'll never, they'll never be replicated. You'll never have another Judy Garland and you'll never have another Frank Sinatra and another Fred Astaire. And I Gene in his modesty didn't include himself in the list and I would put him in there myself. But I, I think people try and they imitate, they try the, they sing the songs and they kind of try to imitate the voice, but they miss that, that little thing that those people had that it, it absolutely cannot be imitated. It, it's like you look at them and people will send me videos and say, oh, he's another Gene Kelly. And I'm looking at it going, so far from it. I mean, there's that I always say it's an ineluctable quality. It's this thing that 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 it it factor, the it girl, you know, it's that quality that you just can't you can't capture and bottle and and so I always so, say <laughs> I always say uh Judy was inhuman. Like there was no she 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 was not human at all. <laughs> because it's 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 everything you just said is she will not be replicated what she the energy that she had was just unlike anything there ever has been and ever will be and it's just it's insane <laughs>
he said that the emotion that she could pull out of herself um, to put over a song was just so extraordinary that it it was just so deep down and and would um, so people will I hear people belt out the songs and and they they kind of imitate a kind of caricature but they miss that emotion they miss that thing that makes you just weep when you hear her um i mean gene would weep when he would uh hear her in um the song for example when she sings to her brother in uh in for me and my gal i mean it just gene just had tears in his eyes as she did it because it was just so powerful and and I think same with Frank Sinatra. You've got so many people imitating him, but again, nobody had that that little thing, that extra quality, and that um, that breath uh, in the voice. And uh, and Gene, I mean, you can imitate the steps to some degree, but again, you don't have that that ability that charm that smile that twinkle in his eye when it was really there you know it's like those things sorry guys those are those are real <laughs> and they make a big difference and the way that he he made the audience feel like they were he was really talking to them and and singing to them and and i think judy had that same quality too that i mean i'm calling her judy i but i I guess I, I guess I can do that in that Jean always referred to her as Judy, but um, she had that same quality that the audience would, she would just hit the audience members and they would just be weeping. Um, so it's, and, I, and they had a lot of fun. They would tease each other. And, uh, and I think that's a fun quality that you don't get very often that they would, he'd said they would set each other up and, she called him Quasimodo when she was trying to get him to sit in a chair and and then they were singing harmony and Jean had Jean could go very very high and and she he would go way up and she'd just be she did you know and it would be kind of drive her crazy because she'd go you've got the you know the the highest voice of anybody I know and, and when they're singing um for me and my gal and um the the tulip song that were on the opposite side of albums but he would the harmony must have been but can you imagine being in the room recording those things when they're they're side by side and you know Gene said that's the problem is that he was used to that kind of microphone singing so they would belt it out I mean they would just let it rip and then but then when he started getting into things like xanadu with olivia newton john they changed the whole technology so there she he said he could not even hear uh olivia next to him she's wh literally whispering into the microphone and she kept telling him to pull it down because he's used to like belting it out and same he said same with barbara streisand when they recorded her for hello dolly that he, he was right next to her and he couldn't hear her and it, but he was used to being with with Judy you know singing these songs mm -hmm. out and full on and but I think the little um the the humor and and then that that she felt comfortable enough to stop by the house which was his house on Rodeo Drive the doors were open they were unlocked night and day so front and back and people would just drop in all the time. So you might come by and Leonard Bernstein might be playing the piano or Oscar Levant or um, Noel Coward. Um, and then um, people would come by, Judy would sing, Frank would sing, Lena Horne would sing. Um, the Gene would occasionally get up and sing. He didn't really like to perform in his own uh uh, uh living room but he would occasionally get up and do a soft shoe or something but um and she would she would sing um the from wizard of oz but she would also sing some of the great irish songs and and uh people loved it when she would you know really belt out those <laughs> but it just a uh, i like I th the sense of fun and the games and the 
and that and that these talents. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, and then you've got Betty Comden and Adolph Green there. You've got um, people playing quote the game, which was a kind of form of charades and. Um, so you've got all these people in the house doing all these different things. You've got some people at the piano. You've got some people in the other room playing this game. You've got people just coming and going and showing up um, until the wee hours of the morning. I mean, Gene would eventually just go upstairs to go to sleep because he had to be at the studio the next morning. But it was um, there's nothing like that now. You don't have any of that kind of um Roddy McDowell, uh, after Gene died, would invite me to his house. And he had a similar kind of thing of inviting people of all ages and from different. Um, I remember I had Pee Wee Herman next to me and I had Johnny Depp and Elizabeth Taylor was across the table from me and Rod Steiger. And uh, so you're kind of like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. But it wasn't the kind of musical uh dance evening and I mean <laughs> we didn't play charades there it was more conversation but um I, I I you won't can you imagine sitting just sitting around the piano listening to Judy Garland sing <laughs> that's like <laughs> on the wall <laughs> uh, and and he said and I do talk about this in the show that in summer stock, you know, she would very rarely come to the set or late, she'd come late and was just having so much difficulty in getting getting there. And so they would pass the time playing basketball and, and just trying to occupy themselves because they'd have to wait to see if she was going to arrive. And and then they'd either get word that she wasn't or or she would show up. But but they said the minute that somebody in the core, in the the young kids in the picture, because they they the, the picture was going so far over time that they had to leave for other commitments and things. And and she would inevitably show up on the day that that young person was leaving. And he said she'd stand by the piano and just belt it out like there was no tomorrow, you know, and so there was a real different, I mean, just a magnificent, generous quality. And, and then also this just inability to uh, eventually inability to show up and everything. So, which, which made it really hard. And Jean would often cover for that when she was really having a difficult time, he then would um, call in sick as well so that it would kind of ease her absence a bit so he really he said to me as he said I owe her my career and um he he always said that he's always credited her with that with um bringing her bringing him in when in for me and my gal the director Busby Berkeley did not want Gene in the picture and um, and he said it was just like ice cold on the set. He just wouldn't even give him the time of day. And they later became friends. But but at that time, it was just awful. And and yet, so Judy was the one who just walked him through it and taught him how to how to appear in front of the camera. And and um, he you know choreographed a few of the the steps and things and you know, kind of showed her things and taught her. He said he taught her how to hold, cant her hat over her eye. And as he had watched all of the people before him and mimicked them doing that. So he, it was kind of a reciprocal thing that you can see her in these pictures that I have, uh, they're rehearsing and, you know, he's way off of the ground and she's not quite as high and jumping and, she's looking over at him for sure, but it's just a, you know, um, I like to think of the two of them. I think it's a, uh, people always, they'll say that they see all this chemistry with Jean, with all these other partners. And the the one I really see it with is Judy. Yeah. It's, the, it's the most intense um, feeling, I think. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say so. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I use You Wonderful You in both of my shows, and there's a reason I do it, because number one, the song is so beautiful, but I think also this, that you just feel it between the two of them when she walks on that stage, and and he's just guiding her through this, and um, and 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 basically this the song and and their conversation is Jean is explaining why you you can use a song and dance to, to say I love you and <clears throat> so in a weird way he's actually describing his whole concept of dance that you use dance to tell the story you you don't and and she says well why don't you just say it and he said well it's kind of nice isn't it you know and it's like oh I'm just, I'm sitting there watching it, just going, oh, it's like, it's kind of nice. You know? and, and then he just gently takes her. And as he always said, people think, you know, the big slam bam numbers are going to be the hardest things to choreograph. But he said that was actually one of the most difficult because these quiet numbers where you have to take a, a, a dancer like someone who can dance like Judy and make her appear like a non-dancer mm -hmm. in this kind of gentle story um, that was much more difficult he said choreographers would understand that he said but the general public would think something like the green um, dress with Sid Charisse that that would be harder but Jean said no that that this quiet number was much more difficult so but it's I think it's so beautiful it's so and um, the the dance that they do in the barn, I think, is one of the best. We were going to ask you about that if Gene had ever talked to the his memories of filming that number with Judy because it's incredible. It really is. It's a uh, just no, not not in, not particularly. He it was just the um, it's it's just it's just such a fun fun number I mean they they really it's just they really hit it and and I, I a lot of people I'm seeing that people are posting that sometimes now they're 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 discovering that because I think some people are discovering Summerstock and I felt I think during COVID they began to watch Summerstock and they're like oh my god this is actually amazing I wish people would screen it more I just they just don't I I keep saying they'll say oh well we'll do sing in the rain I'm like well how about the pirate how about summer stock um you agree <laughs> I know I know and even um I mean even for me and my gal I think is is again you feel this connection you really feel this connection between these two people and so um but they just they just don't do it. I don't, I don't know. I guess they go to the most, um, uh, I, I'll just keep pitching for it. I'll keep, I'll keep going for it. <laughs> if we could just quickly circle back just to you, wonderful you, that to, that is my, one of my favorite numbers between Judy and Jean. And especially when you know what was going on, you know, behind the scenes and how far they had come at this point in time and what Judy's at, you know what her future would then you know come into it is so hard to watch that number and wonder how much of that was acting because they were they were just the connection between the two just seemed so strong was did what did Jean ha, how do I ask it is <laughs> how much of that was acting was he you know was you could just tell that he loved her so much there. Was well, I that think that's true. I mean, I think, so I think it's all acting for both of them, but the love was sincere. So I think that you, um, I think, so I think that's why you feel it. I think that's why it comes across because if you did, if they didn't have that sincere feeling for each other, I think it could come off quite static. Um, imagine another couple doing that. I mean, it's, it could be just very, it would be very flat, I think. Um, but because you've, because they're, the way that they talk to each other, but that you've got to give them credit for the way that they're able to play that scene. I mean, I think, I think you have to give them credit for being extraordinary actors because 
it's um it it's the gentleness the the way that Judy speaks in that is just so um I mean even and then when he says it's it's kind of nice um and and I, I mean, I love when he does the grease paint thing and she's sniffing the grease paint and, and then she starts to get, and he goes, well, oh, no, no, you know, not, not to, like it's way down deep inside of you and you, you have to, can't get that out. And, and, and she's, when she says, uh, he said, you like it? And he goes, yeah, I think I do. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible acting. I mean, those are very hard lines to deliver in a in a convincing way i think i think somebody else could do that and make that just not work at all but i think i always i when i listen to it i'm always just amazed at how at the inflection in their voices and the and how much they convey in that and i think that's um and these are you know what's interesting are these are not method actors these are not people who went in and were told to you know how to imagine how this is they they this is just what they created you know they didn't have some reference you know in their life that they were uh, leaning on to do it it's just that they they knew how to deliver lines i think and but i do think because it is the two of them it, it they they play off of each i mean it's it's true emotion that you're feeling and i think that allows them to deliver the things in the way that they do i don't know if that answers it but it's i i, I wouldn't i wouldn't you can't dismiss the 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 creative um capability of the two of them i think but i think as i say if it were a different partner it 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 wouldn't have been that way it wouldn't have felt the same way i mean if it had been deanna durbin or if it had been um even um the 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 woman who was supposed to be jane's girlfriend in the movie i mean that would never have you'd never have had that scene um mm. Mm. Speaking of connection and Judy and Jean's chemistry, I know Carly wants to ask about a certain cut number from the pirate. Oh, right. Yeah. The, Tell the, us the, everything you know the, about voodoo. <laughs> well, I mean, I have some photos of voodoo. I wish I had the, I wish I had the video of voodoo. Um, uh, I think it, it was, it was one of the things that, usually usually they would film and and then it would be the censors who would cut it i mean they would get to the kind of legion of decency people and everything and they would cut it but this one the the studio cut because they just knew it wouldn't fly um and when you think about it now i mean it's one of the things that i really wish we had because it would be so pale in comparison to the things that are done today Jean just said it was a, a, an extraordinary moment that she just kind of went out of her head and she just started I mean it was an incredibly sensual and sexual uh and uh he you know he it's here he's got her husband behind the camera filming this thing and she's just wildly um Got, gone into this experience but he said it was it was um, unbelievable um I mean it, he said for Gene it was a, an amazing number but but he knew it wouldn't wouldn't pass I mean there's just no way um and you know and unfortunately MGM destroyed all the footage that was ever caught they just thought it was more important to save the can which was more valuable the film can so the cut things but that one hit the cutting room floor immediately so um but we do i do have black and white images of it and she's just kind of flailing around and you know her blouse sort of opens and just different um you know it was just okay. but jean just said it was a remarkable um would have been i mean what? something that we, we would really appreciate today but we don't have we've seen like a few photos so you have like ones that have not been released to the public before yes i don't I, think i've ever I, seen one where a blouse is covered 
Yeah, I, I think, well, that was more Jean describing it. Um, okay. But I think that, I'd, you know, I'd have to look back and then kind of scan and see if these are out. Um, I'm not sure. I think some of these are are a little more rare. Um, it's, uh, I mean, you get hints of it. You get hints of it in, in what's saved in the pirate. You begin to see that she's really, you know, kind of whirling around and she's, in this trance and everything so you can kind of just take that and extend it to something that just becomes this the the two of them and as and the the sensuality and sexuality of the two of these people i mean i mean jean exudes it and 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 what's so interesting is that people don't don't see judy garland in that way they see her as this we do uh, yeah <laughs> Well, yes, I know, but you're not people. No. <laughs> I, I, you know, now Gene always said that the studio always made him take the young girls the and make them into women, and so it was his job um, to to take Judy from the little girl image and into a more adult image and uh, so I think that was that was his kind of gift to her because everybody saw her as Dorothy from Wizard of Oz and and I think they the studio kind of wanted to keep her in that way and and Jean wanted to bring her out and Roger Eden's her guide uh, wanted to bring her out her, the genius of Roger Eden's who really took her under his wing and gave her so much help and support and and help Jean as well on so many things. But I think um, you you see her and you know she's and she's gone beyond being a woman. She's now gone into being a, a sensual sexual being. And I think that you know uh, that 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 you know wasn't acceptable to anybody at that time you know to see her like that but that's that's what Jean saw and when he said she, you know she was the sexiest woman in Hollywood which is so counter I mean he said he was describing her and he said that you know that she was the she was considered the ugly duckling at the time and um and and then I'm reading the reviews and the reports about her, and she's literally described in the in the Hollywood trades as an ugly duckling. And imagine what you what that would how that would make you feel in a in a world like Jean said that you're surrounded by these Hollywood beauties, these goddesses, these these manufactured goddesses um, that, um, and then but he he felt that Judy was the one, you know, so I, I always give him a lot of credit for that because it wasn't the Lana Turners and the, um, the people that the, the pinup women and everything, it was Jean really saw it with Judy. And, and I think that's, that really distinguishes him from so many people, I think. Do you think that adage you've mentioned that we all agree that their cat chemistry was palpable, that they had the best chemistry out of any of their other co-stars. Do you think that contributes to that? Or what other things do you think contributes? I Well, I think it does. I'm trying to think of Judy with, I, I mean, you know, it's hard when you see Easter Parade. You can imagine the two of them in Easter Parade. I think, I, I I mean, it, it was remarkable because the movie got Fred Astaire out of retirement, and and ironically, you know, people always assume that it was Fred Astaire who was the influence on Gene, but Gene never saw Fred Astaire, Gene, but until he had already crafted his own style of dance. So he didn't even see flying down to Rio. He'd already created this new American style, and then he he sees a stare and he doesn't really want to replicate a stare. He wants to, he wants to go away from that type of ballroom dancing and on polished floors and white tie and tails. And he wants to dance in a, in this American common man style. And so he had already choreographed 
uh, three quarters of America of Easter parade. And so when he, he his ankle got broken, that there's another myth on that is that people have these horrific stories about how it was broken. And it was not that he stamped his foot in a rage. Um, it was actually his friend, Noel Howard. They both went up for the ball at the same time and Noel came down on Jean's ankle and just snapped it. And it was over, you know, he knew he was out because he they couldn't hold the picture. They were so far along in the picture, they couldn't hold it until it, he had recovered enough. So it was Jean who suggested getting a stare out of retirement to do it. And and uh, the, Fred called Jean and said, is it okay if I do this? And they've called me and Jean said, yes, I suggested it. So he comes in. So you're actually seeing Fred Astaire dancing to Jean Kelly's choreography in that. And then from that point on, Astaire's choreography changed dr dramatically and he did things like bandwagon. And, but it's hard hard not to think of the chemistry that you would have had but it, with Jean and Judy and that. It's, it's a totally different animal. I mean, um, not not to denigrate Astaire in any way, but I don't, <laughs> well, I'm by a little biased um, anyway, but I don't feel the same chemistry with him that I feel with Gene. I, I just, there's something about Gene is just, it's like a, a animalistic. It's just, it's just this incredible, he's just an incredibly sensual man. And, and it just comes out of him. And, and in the pirate, it's just, um you're with ballet <laughs> yeah yeah i know he got a lot of mail about that you know the the shorts and the <laughs> yeah, i i know straight heterosexual males who are fascinated by his thighs in that number <laughs> yeah and those were his thighs it was interesting even when i met him they were still they were like timbers they're they're not you see a few ballet dancers. Um, he had the body of a, of some of the very compact ballet dancers that it wasn't like he had this really big upper body. I mean, he was incredibly strong in his upper body when he can lift people, but, but it wasn't that over, um, overly muscular thing that you see with people working out today, but the, but his legs were uh, it were were really like pillars and uh for the strength that he had and in that he said that they handed him the the metal for that thing and it was very heavy and and so and of course when we watched it he sees all the things that he d isn't doing right in it you know he would go oh you know uh, you know and and everybody else is just falling over watching it um but even the I, I include the Nina number in my show, in the symphonic show, and that's, he's cheeky, and they're both cheeky, that's what's funny, he's so cheeky when he wiggles his bottom and, and goes around the pole, and, but it's all a play, that's what people didn't understand about the pirate, is that it was all kind of a, a spoof on on uh, Gene's two heroes, uh, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., and um uh, Barrymore John Barrymore you know it's he's playing off of these characters and the press didn't quite understand that they thought he was sort of overplaying these things and yet what he's doing is he's just you know he's I always think of the way it's, it's he wiggles his head and these little things with his eyes and it um but that's all that's all a reference to all these things. Even the cigarette thing is a reference to the gaucho. I mean, it's like, but I think, and then she's just, I mean, when they're playing the, the comedy scenes together and the, the anger scenes when she's smashing everything over his head, and everything, it's just, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I just, and when she's, you know, dreaming about him, you know, Makoko and everything, it's just, it's, it's just so fun. And I think it holds up so well. I mean, that's, what's really it. I think it plays much better now than it did back then it, because people get it. They get that this isn't, that Gene isn't, it's not Gene overacting. It's Gene being all these guys and, and playing what the, what Barrymore and and uh, uh, 
Fairbanks would be doing. So I, I think now people can kind of look at it and they get that this is not, this is fun. It's playful. It's playful. You know, when do you, when do you find a movie now? I'm really that, I mean, you don't see many movies that are joyful and playful, you know, that are really, really fun. You come out just feeling like, wow, that was just so much, so much fun. You know, I want to see it again, that kind of feeling. I think the pirate is, and even summer stock. I just, I think too, I think you come out of that and people come out singing, they come out dancing. The, the lyrics are so beautiful and, and they're, you remember them. They're, they're singable as opposed to now it's like, and you don't, there's no song that you remember it's just it's just all kind of goes away but with this I mean you have get happy um I, I mean Judy and get happy is one of the best things that's ever been filmed and um and Jean Jean was Jean was um responsible for getting Charles Walters Chuck Walters out to uh LA and he really thought highly of Chuck Walters and and for uh, Walters to create that is just it was a remarkable number and I think um, both Gene and Walters were trying so hard to just make take care of Judy and that and make sure um, you know that it was Walters who was originally taking all the phone calls from her in the middle of the night and then he asked Gene if if Gene could take over because he wasn't getting any sleep and Gene would just take the call and just kind of keep the phone by his head and but they both just adored her and revered her and so they were wanting to make sure she got through and I think you have an interesting point about looking at that film and then thinking, I mean, you look at the, how, how grand she is. And then you look at what the studio did. It's just, it just, it does kind of break your heart because you just think, how could, how could you do that to this remarkable artist? I mean, that, that you're, and essentially you just crush a, a person, a crush an artist. I, I, it's hard to, it's hard, but she was, she was, you know, it was a business and it was just didn't run when, you know, when you start going into overtime and, and the money is going up and up and up and up and the returns aren't coming back. It, they, that's how they had to look at it and, you know, look at today, I'm sure it would even be worse because now it's conglomerates running things and, it, you know, but, but yeah, it's, it is hard to watch that. Um, yeah. Okay, ask me more. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to, while we're on the topic of, of you know, what the studio um, had done, if I could ask, when Judy left MGM, how did that change her and Jean's dynamic? Did they continue um, to keep in touch or throughout the 50s and 60s, or how did that play out? I I was kind of looking at my notes before I got on today, and um because I asked Jean that question, I said, "Did you did did you stay in touch with her and and kind of continue this role?" And she said, "He said Chuck Walters continued it longer." And Jean said that once she married Sid Luft, um, he he said I wasn't part of that circle. So, um, and and there were circles that would go, and um, so he said that was not. So they. Um, you know, they were not in touch the same way that they had been because before they would, you know, go to, go to lunch and, and, and she would come to the house and everything, but it, it then became much more, much more rare. Um, so I, he saw her at the palace. Um, she requested that he come when she performed at the palace. Um, so he went to that. And so they were, they were still in touch but not not like the kind of pals she was his pal um he had mostly male pals but she was the uh, the female pal and um and that just couldn't continue uh, yeah left was just traveling in a different circle and jean had jean was very 
he didn't kind of cross over into things if if it wasn't his type of thing he didn't he didn't go into that so like he wasn't part he adored frank but he wasn't part of the rat pack he didn't that wasn't his thing so it's it's kind of kind of interesting that he he didn't he didn't go into these things that he didn't really care for so yeah i'd always wonder about that <laughs> Yeah, me too. We're kind of devastated that, you know, he was meant to be a guest on her television show on the fifth episode, and then there was a whole production change, and Jean wasn't on the show in the end, and they were going to reprise for me and my gal that they had done at the share benefit in 1963, and we would have just loved that to have happened. <laughs> I do love the pictures of them from the share benefit because they come out holding hands, and it's just so, it's so dear. Uh, and you see, I've been posting pictures. I, I wasn't doing it consciously, but I was I was posting pictures about Jean's affection um, because I I get so rattled by when people describe him as a taskmaster. And it's like, how about professional? How about we change that word to professional? And how about, you know, difficult? Well, how about, again, professional? How about he knew in directing and choreographing that if you don't hit that mark and the camera doesn't hit its mark, you have to do it again. And that costs money and that takes time. And and sometimes you might have a great shot, but it's blown because somebody missed the mark. And so he didn't he didn't abide by anything. I mean, you you had to come in and do your, you know, hit your marks and and he demanded that of himself. And, and I think um, I just, so I get kind of irritated by this description of, uh, or of, uh, of somebody who was mean. I mean, he was not mean to people. He didn't have that. He wasn't, he would be tough. I think tough is different from mean. I think tough is, you know, come in, do it, hit it. Um, but so I started posting these pictures because of especially of Gene and Judy backstage um, in Summerstock and 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 in uh, when he's shooting Du Barry as a lady and, sh and she's doing Lily Marsh. I mean, they're playing and they're making faces and they're doing all this funny stuff. And then there's Walt, they're doing these dances together just backstage. And but the ones with with her with summer stock you can see she, she's holding him and or he's holding her and it's this very intimate uh, you know solidarity between the two of them and and so when i found the pictures of, from Cher, I, I just was so touched that they're walking out holding hands and it just um it i think that signals an awful lot i, I think that just says I mean, he he was he was close to a lot of his co-stars, but I think there was a different. There's something there in this. I think she trusted him. It, she just trusted him, and she she knew she was in good hands with him. That he would never ever violate her or her. It, it just tremendous respect, affection, and trust. I think the trust is probably the biggest thing. She just knew he would take care of her. Yeah. I'm a strong believer in soulmates. And when I look at Judy Garland and Gene Kelly together, soulmates, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, he used the word pals, which meant he wasn't pals with many people, you know. So I think when he he used palship um, as a, that that really distinguished uh, their relationship. She didn't describe it. That, that was unique with her as a woman. Yeah. Um, so I, I I just, like I say, I kind of, um, I do wish I had met her. I got to meet Frank, obviously. I didn't meet Fred Astaire, but I I, I would like to have met her. I've, I've met uh, Liza and I have deep respect for Liza. And um, I, I, she's very she's very good and i see her in interviews and things and when people try to get her to dig into her parents and into um the the kind of decline and everything and she she obviously hates these 
portrayals of her mother as much as I hate them. Um, well, perhaps it's even it touches her even more. But I I love the way that she people keep pushing her, and then she says, "I refuse," <laughs> and it's just kind of like. Yes, I refuse. I I I want to. I want some opportunity to use that sometime because I think that way you just kind of you just don't go there. And I think that's a. So I'm really hoping that we can, um, in in the book that I'm writing that Gene I brought me out to California to write but after I met him in 1985 it's only taken a few decades you know what <laughs> somebody somebody wrote something on a post said you know I wonder about this woman you know she said she was going to write a book and we haven't seen that and everything so usually I would delete it and but this time now I'm getting much feistier. The older I get, I get I'm getting much <laughs> feistier. So I just came back and I said, you know, I guess I, I created two live shows that are touring. I wrote an eight part radio series about Jean in French. I mounted a statue of Jean in Leicester Square in London. I uh, helped create an Hermes scarf uh, dedicated to him. I remounted the ballet that he created in 1960 for a Scottish ballet that sold out. I, you know, and I said, oh, and there's this there thing. Called... Oh, well, well, that was, yeah, I got that before, before Jean died. I was just talking about the stuff after, but yeah, I, yeah. I wish I'd gotten it myself. And then, um, and then I said, oh, and there's this little thing called grief. <laughs> and I, I said, funny thing grief and I just left it at that you know and I just um but I uh, Jean always said that um you know that Judy deserved an entire chapter in the book and um I'm not quite sure if the way that the book is constructed now that it will be an entire chapter about her I'm not quite sure how how she will be fitted in um I, as I was reading my notes God, I have so much information about her. Um, I, I just thought this is amazing. And the way he speaks about her is just so, um, it, it's so poignant and so on point, I think, and so not out there. I mean, it's so not in books. And so I, I just have to figure out the best way to tell the story, um, whether it's all encapsulated in one section of the book or whether it's kind of the way that he described her over the 10 years but um it's just it's just beautiful i mean it's really beautiful and um the the things that they did together they you know they went pub crawling in new york he forced her to go with I him was and just gonna ask about that actually the first meeting well it wasn't the first meeting Second, because- sorry yeah as she had been she had come backstage before but this time she was a woman it was very different versus the little girl who had come backstage you know with the, um and and they went out to but he took her to all the places hangouts where he went which were not the rit- ritzy places he took her to these these places and in fact he took her to one place and that the, the the owner didn't even recognize her so it was kind of great because here she was you know just done wizard of oz and it was like the you know you've got got her out on the streets and and but yet she could go to these places and she was kind of incognito and and uh they in one place that's where they did this kind of a almost like a challenge dance that, uh, that they each challenged each other with the songs and and who who would know the verse and the chorus and everything and so that's where you know the, I would love to have been at the opening of Pal Joey that's one thing that I really wish I could have been there for that and I would love to have been a mouse on the floor when they were doing the this challenge dance I think that but I do have his description of it so I think I'll try to make that as come to life as much as possible. But I hope I can, I think I can do her justice. I think I can, I can give her the, the quality that, um, and maybe, maybe begin to change the story a bit um, that instead of quoting all the other books that maybe mine, mine could be referenced. Let's hope. Um, I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep, 
pushing and and also keep with Gene because Gene wanted to be known more for being behind the camera as a director and choreographer and he gets lopped off of those lists people ask me did he ever direct anything and I'm like well yeah sing in the rain on the town hello dolly and 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 then they'll say, did he ever choreograph anything? And I'm like, well, everything you see, basically, but they just don't see him because he's such a big figure on the screen. They don't they don't see him in that capacity. So I think that's my job is to keep that out, which is what he asked me to do specifically. And I think for Judy to put the truth out um, as a credible and it's not my voice, it's Gene's voice, and it's it's on record, it's recorded. So it's it's not this kind of made up uh, stuff and it matches it matches the production notes that's the other thing is I went back to say if he said you know it took me a day and a half to shoot sing in the rain I checked the production notes sure enough it took a day and a half to shoot so I just I made sure as a journalist that I you know he if he's wrong he's wrong and that's fine you just you just say he was off on the date or something but I, I felt it was my responsibility to check what he's saying. You know, did it? Did this happen at this time? And and I think because he's directing, uh, choreographing, and starring in things, he's having to watch the the budget, the schedule, his own work. He's also having to watch everybody else and what they're doing. And so, I think he had a firmer grip on the whole the whole of things than say somebody like a Debbie Reynolds, who very often wasn't even on the set, you know, when these things are happening, you can look and see when she's called in, when she leaves, when she checks out. I mean, it has, you know, when you arrive, when you go to makeup, you know, when you leave the set, when you go to lunch, um, it's a remarkable record, too, of them. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. And it's for every, every the, the MGM movies. Unfortunately, some of the other studios didn't they didn't keep their records um hollywood's not very good at their at maintaining their history it's sad i i just um i feel i i just got some storyboards i bought on ebay of gene's movie take me out to the ball game you you don't see storyboards for movies i i, I it's i've never seen them and um but I said to the people they delivered him yesterday, and I said, you know, I don't feel like I own this. I feel like it's I'm the steward. I'm just the person who's maintaining and putting, keeping the things in archival sleeves, and then they will will all go up into the virtual into the the International Museum of Dance that we're we will be launching soon. So all of Jean's, Jean speaking about Judy and all of the material, even if things might not go into the book, will all go up into the cloud. So people around the world will be able to access it in perpetuity. So I'm just the person, that, you know, taking care, protecting, not selling off the stuff. I mean, I could pay my mortgage if I did, but I, I believe it, it should all be together. So um, it'll all go up and you'll all be able to, you'll live much longer than I will and you'll be able to access it and hear him, which I think will be, I put that in my radio series, uh, Gene talking to me, sitting with me on the couch as I'm recording him. I have my little recorder out next to him. He's got a vodka tonic there that, because we'd start recording at five o'clock or something in his cocktail hour. And so you can hear the ice in his glass clinking and, and um and he's talking it's just very powerful to it's you know you're you're listening it's going oh my god he's sitting right there and and he's talking so that's what will be available to everybody ultimately so that's i just have to live long enough to keep all this going i've got to finish this book and then i want to do a photo book that will have a lot of these very rare photos of judy and gene in it um so people can see the behind the scenes things and uh, and here I'll have some of the words about him, her in that that aren't in the memoir, some of the descriptions and then and then the you know we're we're starting the Museum of Dance platform now, but that will take takes time to build this thing um, and get it up in the cloud. Um, so I've just a few projects left to. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the touring show and then the ballet will be back out on the road again so we'll have three touring shows and 
So anything else? You can ask me anything. I mean, I it's kids do. Say, you mentioned Sid Luff before, and um, you're saying, you know, that you're, you're sort of protector of all this and making sure it gets out there. Just want to say thank you, not to overstep, but you're so much better than Sid Luff was at retaining Judy's memory. <laughs> Well, I only met him once. He was, I met him at a restaurant. He was sitting at another table and he was really in the latter, you know, the latter part of his life. And I, so I had no, no connection. We had no connection. Someone just introduced us, but it's, it's a, I think it, I was in a different position. Um, I mean, I'm really glad that the professional part, the, the, writing the book part came before he, the marriage part came in the sense that if it had been backwards, you know, or if I hadn't been brought on as a writer uh, of Jean's memoir, then I think I would remember the stories vaguely. You know, you would remember moments and, you know, what happened with at Frank Sinatra's house or something. But the fact that I was recording everything every day and we would be at, I say this, I, you know, we would be sitting at the table having dinner and Jean would say, you're not writing anything down. And I'm like, I'm eating. I mean, it's like, so, and then we'd go out to the, the piano bar at night. We had a date every Saturday night and we'd go to Spago restaurant up on sunset. And then we'd go to a piano bar at the Peninsula hotel and, and he'd start hearing these songs that, um, and it just, they all brought back all these memories. And so he just starts talking. And so I'm sitting there just scribbling notes on on uh, cocktail napkins and sugar packs. And I have them all in the archives. I kept them all. So I have something that nobody has. I mean, I don't really know. There, I can't think of another spouse who was assigned the task of recording their husband or wife. I mean, it's an unusual thing. And I think, I think it's a different relationship than say a, a child, because I think the children have different relationships. Um, and um, so it, I, I, I think I was, I was in a very privileged position to that. He, he um, trusted me with his story and entrusted me and that he, basically said this is I, I I want you to get this out and I want this is how I would like to be remembered and and if anybody's going to do it it will be you so it's been quite a, it's like he sits right here and and it's I feel it's quite a responsibility I feel like I I have a um, a, a real responsibility to see it through. Um, so several people have asked me, they're like, why, why are you doing this? Why don't you just like do something else? And I'm just like, well, I, I really do feel like, I, you know, when somebody hands you something like this, a gift like this, um, and gives you the responsibility to care for it, it's um, the, the widow of the jazz pianist and composer, Oscar, Peterson is a good friend of mine, Kelly Peterson, and she calls it the three P's, the uh, protect, preserve, and promote, that that's, that's the responsibility we have for uh, these legacies, and uh, I guess you guys are there for, for Judy, because um, there isn't, you know, I, I mean, the one person who gets it, the story right, and I don't know if you've spoken with, have you spoken with jo John Fricke? Yes, we are quite good friends. Yeah, he's a friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's he's like gold, and um, and he's very kind with me. You know, if something, if I happen to get a a date or a place off, he's very kind. He sends me a note on the side, and he'll say, "This, I think this actually happened, or this photo was from something else." He's 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 a gem. He's a gem. He's the real deal, and I think. Um, he's the real protector and the one who um you know, it's just doing the same thing i'm doing just trying to keep it out there keep the record straight keep the dates right keep it keep her out at the level that she, where she should be yeah. i mean these are the superstars these are the superstars you you're just not going to see and 
not going to see. Um, I mean, and, you know, the biopic thing, I mean, it was Judy. You know, Ju Gene would watch these things about his friends and he hated them. He hated seeing these people portrayed in ways that had bore no relation to reality. And so that's when he turned to me and said, I do not want this. I do not want a biopic. And so you've probably noticed I've been pretty vocal about that, that that um, the minute anybody gets near it, I just I just voice his uh, objection to it because I I mean, good luck with somebody trying to do it. But even in the Renee Zellweger movie, like she does her own singing. Like it's not like how can you be Judy Garland and it's not her voice? It's like it's if someone played Gene Kelly. It's it's not his dancing. It's you can't you know. No, you can't really replicate. I would I would steer really clear of all these things. I just but I think it's again the 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 the, the entertainment world has changed. So people are going to these things that are. It's not really creating new it, new material. It's just taking lives and and making them into movies and or Broadway plays and things and. Sometimes it works. I mean, sometimes, uh, sometimes it works if you have, if you have a living person who's like Tina Turner, who is actually guiding Tina, um, and they are working with people. I think that makes a difference. And if she's there, able to say no, that isn't right, and things. So you, but when you're doing it with people that are gone, and and you really don't don't have anybody. Um, uh, consulting with it I think it gets it can really go off the rails and I think just leave them leave them alone let them let them be people always say for my shows I should put in dance live dancers and everything and I think well a that does a disservice to both it it doesn't show Gene but it also you you know it's not fair to put these other people in in comparison to Gene I think that's not fair that then people are going well he's no Gene Kelly or something and so I think just let Gene be Gene up there and let people see that. You know, I hope I can do these shows for a very long time and young people will will go, wow, you know. And um I I I wish there were more of that for Judy, I think, that of because people would go nuts seeing her. I mean, seeing her if in a, some kind of a similar thing to what I'm doing. I think Lorna left us some of that, but kind of more personal stories of their relationship and things. So it's, it's very hard. It's a, yeah, I would steer very clear and let them just be glorious. I, I, I desperately want to do my show at the Hollywood Bowl because I'd love to um, I'd love to include the the number that they sang together there at the bowl. And um, I have a kind of um, not, you know, it's a it's a kind of rocky version of of the recording, but I think it would be great to hear them there and think of the two of them standing there singing. I mean, can you imagine? Oh God. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I just let them be, let them be, let them, let them be. But I'm happy to promote her in any way um, in perpetuity because, because of the gift that she gave Jean, but also the gift she gave to the world. We agree. So, well, I better get off, but can we do this again? I mean, we, I mean, we barely touched the surface, so I'm more than happy to get on at any other time. I mean, I don't know if you have a lot more questions, but you may, I may have answered everything, but. I'm we sure have have <laughs> this can well, be our part one. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great well maybe we can do part two and i will be further in the book and and um and maybe we can start promoting that let's hope that i cro cross that or i'll be at the liverpool philharmonic or i'll be at the um, toronto symphony or um back to ireland i yeah i would like i i was going to talk to rte again because uh 
you know, that was 2019. So it would be, it's time, I think. And the same with Scotland was 2018. So I think it's time to get back out. Anyway, I'll get off now and then let's do it again. Just reach out. And uh, like I say, next year ought to be a big year with lots of concerts rolling out in different places. And I'll be able to reveal more of that the next time we chat. I can't tell you all the details now, but okay. but um the the one woman show will be in Seattle on, on December 14th and 15th. Um, so that will be fun to get back on the boards with that. So so let's um and I'll meet all of you again, meet you again and you too uh for the first time. But thank you so much for including me. Thank I, you so uh, much for coming. Uh, Thank any you. any time, just any question or anything. I'm like I'm the I'm the West Coast John Fricky, so I'm happy to <laughs> give any details. And if you speak with him, give him my regards and tell him how much I respect him and and love him. He's really he's really a gentleman. So, all right. Thank you. Until next time. Until okay. next time. Okay. Bye. Next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.